New data is indicating that in the hands of surgeons who are experienced in minimally invasive mitral valve surgery, you will recover much quicker. The mitral valve is a valve in the heart that's made up of two leaflets that open and close to make sure blood goes one way through the heart from the left atrium to the left ventricle. When the big chamber in the heart, the left ventricle contracts to pump blood around the body, this valve closes tightly so that the high pressure here is not exposed into the left atrium. Mitral valve regurgitation is when the mitral valve leaks. Mitral valve regurgitation is commonly caused by something called mitral valve degeneration, a weakness in the tissue of the mitral valve and the strings or the cords that attach the mitral valve to the inside of the left ventricle. These cords are like parachute strings that prevent the mitral valve from turning the wrong way when the ventricle contracts. So this is the normal motion. Two leaflets, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet. Sometimes these strings can elongate as a result of this degeneration, this weakness, creating leakage because these leaflets are not sealing anymore. Sometimes it can be both leaflets. Sometimes these strings can rupture, causing very severe regurgitation if it happens quickly, or if it happens slowly, a more chronic form of regurgitation, which in the beginning may not cause you any problems, but ultimately will make you short of breath. The common symptoms of mitral valve regurgitation include tiredness, lethargy, shortness of breath. Later, one might get palpitations, funny heartbeats, as you develop irregular heartbeats, and then eventually heart failure. The problem with mitral valve regurgitation over time is that it starts to create high pressure in the left atrium, which over a period makes this left atrium start to swell. And then as it swells, it starts to become irritable and it wriggles. This is called atrial fibrillation. Initially, this might be on and off, but eventually it becomes permanent. Now, the problem with atrial fibrillation is it creates a situation where clots can form within that chamber. And those clots, if they detach, can fly off into the circulation and create a blockage anywhere in your body. But typically, it increases the risk of you having a stroke. So this is not really a good thing. When you develop severe mitral valve regurgitation, particularly in the setting of a valve that can be easily repaired by a surgeon, you should have an operation even if you don't have symptoms because you really don't want to develop atrial fibrillation. One of the other problems of long-standing mitral valve regurgitation is the development of pulmonary hypertension. What does that mean? What that means is the pressure in the lung arteries start to rise. Can you imagine what's happening? This mitral valve is leaking either as a result of the both leaflets turning the wrong way or one of the leaflets turning the wrong way. This creates swelling of the left atrium, which then starts to wriggle. This creates a back pressure into the lung arteries. Once you develop pulmonary hypertension that becomes irreversible, no matter what we do to your mitral valve, we are not going to change your long-term outlook. And this is why it's so very important to ensure that if you've got mitral valve leak, it's monitored on a regular basis so that if you develop severe leak with a valve condition that can be easily repaired, your surgeon can intervene before you develop atrial fibrillation, before you develop left atrial enlargement, before you suffer a stroke, and before you develop pulmonary hypertension. The treatment of mitral valve regurgitation is really very simple these days and the risk of surgery before you develop all of these other conditions that I've spoken about is really quite low, perhaps 1% or less. And the surgery to repair the heart valve will leave you feeling much better if you've got a lot of symptoms, but more important than that, will make you live longer. New data is indicating that in the hands of surgeons who are experienced in minimally invasive mitral valve surgery, you will recover much quicker because the incisions that are used to perform this procedure are much smaller and don't divide bone. The traditional operation is through the breastbone. It's a good operation. If your surgeon is not familiar with minimally invasive mitral valve repair, that is the operation that is best for you. You'll get a good result. The breastbone though takes 12 weeks to heal and it's a big cut and there are risks there's a small risk it can get infected and never heal. Although that risk is small, it has serious consequences if that occurs. Now, in experienced hands, 
over the last 20 years, or 30 years even now, surgeons across the world have been performing an operation very similar to the one through the breastbone. But instead of opening the breastbone, we make a series of tiny cuts over the right side of the chest, which are non-bone breaking cuts. Now these cuts will heal in a few days, and the pain associated with these cuts is minimal, Bleeding from these cuts is minimal, and because we haven't divided bone, you don't have to wait 12 weeks for the breastbone to heal. The UK mini trial, which was a multi-center randomized trial, has demonstrated very clearly that in the hands of experienced surgeons, you will recover at four to six weeks much more quickly with a minimally invasive cut than with the breastbone. And what is really quite nice about this data is that if you compare the outcome from breastbone patients versus keyhole patients at one year, there's no difference in quality of repair. So in, in the hands of experienced minimally invasive mitral valve surgeons, with a few tests that indicate that you are suitable for that surgery, it is probably the best operation for you if you want to recover quicker with smaller cuts. Sometimes when you're not fit enough for surgery, then we can perform different types of treatments. One treatment is called mitroclip. This is where we use a clip passed through a vein in the groin to literally clip the two edges of the leaflets together to prevent the bad leaflet from turning the wrong way. This can be quite effective in reducing the symptoms in older patients who are not fit for surgery, but unfortunately doesn't give as good a result as surgery so far. So if you are fit for surgery, it's the best way forward. So when is the time to intervene in severe mitral valve regurgitation? If you've got severe mitral valve regurgitation with symptoms such as shortness of breath, tiredness, palpitations, or you develop heart failure, or if you develop enlargement of the left atrium with atrial fibrillation or pulmonary hypertension, these are strong indications that you need surgery. If the repairability for your mitral valve problem is high, more than 95%, then actually, even in the absence of symptoms, if you have severe mitral valve regurgitation, you are better off having surgery because it will prevent you from developing atrial fibrillation. It'll prevent you from developing high blood pressure in the lumbar arteries. So therefore, you will get a much better long-term result from correction of your mitral valve problem.